teeming among the things around us are millions of unseen organisms, among which are certain pests called mites. These are found in an incredible variety of habitats, although usually they pass unnoticed due to their small size. Although a great number are free-living, many have made a name for themselves as parasites. Demodex folliculorum and brevis have been recognized for over a century, and several decades ago were already noted to be associated with blepharitis. They are found especially on the face and eyelashes, with Demodex folliculorum inhabiting the lash follicle, and Demodex brevis leaving deeper in the spacious glands. As ophthalmologists, we have all seen crusty eyelids and eyelashes. Terms like seboroid blepharitis and staphylococcal blepharitis must be familiar, but only recently has attention returned to Demodex mites. So why do we have this discrepancy in the coverage of something that has been recognized for decades? What you see is what you get. On the other hand, is what you don't see not there? Are there aliens out there? For the longest time, Demodex mites became a niche phenomenon, known by dermatologists, but dismissed as nothing but commensals. Possible reasons for this include their ubiquity. Their lack of visibility also makes it all too easy for doctors to dismiss them. Let's take a look at how we can easily smoke the pesky mites from their hideout. The traditional way of presenting Demodex mites involves epilation and then mounting the lashes on a microscope slide. Apart from discomfort, epilation may result in many mites being left in the lash follicle. In my experience, cleaning the eyelashes of crusts and cylindrical dandruff exposes the underlying demodesis in the follicles, which can then be extracted without obscuring debris. Even if some demodex may be hiding within the debris, I have always been able to extract demodex in patients where the cylindrical dandruff was rubbed off first. For visualizing and collecting the mites, I set the slit lamp magnification to 16 times and turn up its brightness. By twirling a single eyelash, any mites that are present are swept by the lash out of the follicle. They can barely be seen as minute, shiny, translucent, cylindrical objects. I scoop them up with the tip of a pair of forceps. If the eyelash is pulled without twirling, the demodesa simply pop out and in again. I would emphasize the importance of twirling the eyelash so that the mites lie free on the lid surface. Avoid closing the jaws of the forceps, as that would merely crush them to a pulp. Let's now take a look at how we can transfer and mount the mites onto a slide for viewing under the microscope. A simple way to do so involves first making a circular mark on the non-sticky side of a piece of cellophane tape. This piece of tape is then mounted on one side of a microscope slide, with the tips of the sticky surface on the glass, but the rest of the sticky surface flipped such that it faces upwards. The forceps tip with mites is then gently touched onto the sticky surface of the tape. The piece of tape is then flipped and stuck onto the microscope slide. In this way, the mites can easily be observed live under high magnification. The eggs can often be seen, as can various stages of mite development, such as the developing adult mite within the case of the nymph. The aims of demonstrating the mites through a microscope are several fold. Firstly, while the mites are often directly observable with the slit lamp, it is useful to confirm that the sometimes indistinct shapes are in fact mites. Secondly, patients often do not believe that they can have these mites and may not comply with treatment unless they are shown the evidence. A wide variety of treatment methods have been used to eradicate the mites. According to Costin, Many agents, including ether and turpentine, kill the mites instantly, while sulfur ointment and yellow oxide of mercury can markedly reduce their numbers. However, these medications, as well as the more recently described tea tree oil, are very irritating to the ocular surface 
and can also irritate the skin. A gentler way of killing the mites involves the use of compounded 1% ivermectin cream. This provides a much more direct route to the affected site compared with systemic ivermectin, which has been reported in peer-reviewed articles. After applying a hot compress and cleaning the eyelashes thoroughly, a small amount of ivermectin 1% cream is rubbed to cover the eyelashes and then left on for the night. Over the next week, the adult mites are eradicated, but treatment is continued for one month to ensure any hatching nymphs are killed as well. The controversy of Demodex arises for a number of reasons, including the paradox of their ubiquity versus the lack of symptoms in many patients who are infested by them. Here, the similarities with canine disease are striking, given the ubiquity of these mites in dogs, but the relative rarity of symptomatic mange. Possible reasons why some develop symptoms while others do not include an immunosuppressed state, different immune reactions to the mites or their products depending on one's HLA makeup, or the different microflora and fauna associated with the mites. The mites could be sick. If so, the mites could be acting as vectors, bringing pathogenic microorganisms deeper into pilospatious units or even into the subcutaneous tissue. Given how common these mites are, how do we decide who to treat? Recent studies provide increasing evidence of the role of demodex mites in ocular surface disease. Peripheral corneal vascularization, infiltration, and conjunctival inflammation have been noted in the presence of demodex, and resolution coincided with their eradication. Even without such signs, we have noticed the resolution of eyelid crusting and lid margin itching when these are associated with demodex infestation. Posterior blepharitis and Maybomian gland disease, however, does not respond as consistently to topical treatment with ivermectin or tea tree oil and may require the usual hot compresses with oral antibiotics in recalcitrant cases. So keep a watch out for these pesky mites and you may just cure some of your patients of a lifetime of itchy, crusty eyelids. <laughs>